My name is Hajime Tazaki from University of Tokyo. And uh, my talk is uh, more like a lower level implementation stuff about uh, our user space networking implementation, which is called NEWS, the networking stack in user spaces. So the motivations behind this, uh, our small new project on news is uh, from my post, uh, from my view, the design of the internet itself is almost done by the, down around the 1950s, I don't know. But the implementation is not finished yet of the, the internet. Uh, implementation of the internet is not finished yet. So if we want to have a new feature of the, for example, in the transport, transport protocols, for example, we may need to have some obstacle before deploying that stuff. Or, or, uh, so this is kind of the, the main problem that we, have, we, we, are, we are having with the current networking stack, uh, which makes some uh, slow evolution of the uh, operating system uh, evolutions. And uh, what we want to have what I personally want to have is a, a kind of the personalization of the networking stuff, where everyone can input uh, their own idea uh, onto the networking stack as, uh, as easy as possible. So let me get into the one of the examples that we may face in the current networking stack. So if someone has a new great idea on the new layer three or layer four protocol. And the once we want to try with such a new idea, maybe we, face a, we will face a problem uh, because the, uh, the code is not so well tested and it's, it's also experimental. Then maybe their code will destroy your life because they are implemented in the kernel spaces. Or maybe if you can try with such a new software into the virtual machines, maybe it makes some overhead before using, using it. So this is a kind of the survey report done by the Microsoft researchers, where the question for the survey is the when you download the, when you download and run software, new software, how often do you use the virtual machine in the in their daily life. And the answer is almost nobody is using in usual life, which means maybe we, virtual machine is not so enough to use uh, such a use cases. So even though the new feature is merged to the upstream kernel, uh, the usage of the, this new feature is not so increasing, uh, in, not so fast increasing. I mean, uh, so this is uh, an observation on the, on the, and the measurement result in the internet backbone where the, some of the TCP extensions, uh, how, how many, some of the TCP extensions are used in, the, the, in their backbone networking. So for example, in the, in the middle of the line, uh, it shows the TCP timestamp option is uh, how, how, how much TCP timestamp option has been observed in the backbone networking, networks. And uh, this option has been standard, standardized at, uh, I guess, the 1919 something. And uh, Windows, 2000, Windows 2000 has been introduced with this option. And uh, Windows Vista is defaulted this option by uh, around 2006. So even though we have a default uh, configuration of that uh, new feature, it takes a long time to make a dominant usage of this, such extension. So, uh, so the current shape of the uh, networking stack is, takes a long time to deploy it. But in the uh, file system world, there is nice work, which is called the Fuse, File System in User Spaces. And uh, this uh, framework provides uh, 
uh, kind of the personal um, file system personalization uh, without convincing the people who is managing the current source code. But uh, people can introduce a new file system without touching the kernel source code. So the approach that they take, that they took for this fuse implementation is they introducing some indirection in the kernel layer and making some interfaces to the user space so that the people can use such a, a useful interfaces to introduce new features. So obviously this indirection makes bad performance uh, compared to the, the native file system, but uh, they don't care about the performance. But uh, do, they do really care about the flexibility and the functionality to make it work, make it change, make, make the change, uh, make the world changes. So my motivation is why not we have uh, such a feature in the networking stack as Fuse has. So there are already a couple of, not a couple, but so many alternatives that we already have. So one of them is the container-based one, which provides a really lightweight virtualization, which may alleviate some VM-based uh, deployment uh, approaches. But the, the containers, the problem from, from my point of view of the container is that they share the kernel state, uh, networking stack between the host operating system and the guest one, which may, may, which may reduce the flexibility of the uh, networking stack. And another uh, interesting approach is that uh, a couple of last two or three years is the introducing, introducing the library operating system, which is kind of the user space networking stack. And the, there are already so many projects, like MTCP or Mirage, uh, which is based on the full scratch based operating system, if I understand correctly. And uh, also porting based approaches, like uh, always we're using uh, free based networking stack, and Sunstop as well, and the Arkis and Open Road. There are so many, uh, not only the academia, academic projects, but also the industrial project has been doing such a, such a create, uh, creating such a library-based operating system. And also, RAMP kernel is, I, from my point of view, is kind of the uh, library operating system where the user space program can use, can switch the, any kind of the uh, networking stack that can be provided by the RAMP kernel. And in the past, there is a kind of uh, a Linux-based library operating system, which was called uh, LKL, I guess. And, but it's almost outdated, and uh, it's not maintained at this moment. So, so much my motivation is the first motivation for my this project, for this project is introducing the Linux version of the user space user space networking stack, which is called News. So, what is News? So news is the network stack in user space, and it is kind of the library operating system. It's the library version of the networking stack of the monolithic kernel. Uh, in the current stage, uh, we only focusing on the Linux uh, monolithic kernel, but uh, I believe that uh, any other open source operating system that has a full source tree of the uh, source code of the networking stack can be adapted to this framework with, by adding some new features. And uh, since the, each of application have a different IP address that has uh, on the host operating system, host operating system, so this framework can be considered as a process, a kind of the virtualization technique, which is based on the application level uh, providing the application level virtualization. So comparing to the uh, other uh, existing work, uh, what's the difference with news is uh, we try to focus on our effort to minimize the porting effort of the uh, existing monolithic kernels uh, networking stack. So we are now using the most of the rest 
mostly latest version of the Linux ne NetNext 3. And uh, this uh, code base is changing very frequently, but we don't have, uh, we didn't take much time to much time to reflect the latest code to our code bases because our design of the uh, news uh, makes minimize of the porting efforts. And it's also interesting that uh, the first speaker of this uh, user space networking stack mentioned uh, it can provide a full functional networking stack for the recent trend of the high speed networking IO um, stuff like a NetMap or IntelDBDK. And any kind of kernel bypass technology can be combined with such a user space networking stuff. So uh, let me get into more detail about how it works, how news works. So how it works, we need four distinct uh, components uh, adding to the existing monolithic kernel. So first one is the, of course, we need the source code to build the library version of the operating system. And we also need to add the, some kind of scheduler that kernel space uh, context primitives has been working. And we also provide the Guru code for the application that Podix API can be used uh, transparently without, uh, without thinking about the whether the underlying networking stack is user space or not. And also, uh, since the user space networking stuff bypass the kernel, uh, kernel network stack, we need to take care of the networking, uh, network IO, uh, which network culture should, should use with this, with this application. So first one is the kernel modification. Uh, so we provided, uh, we have been provided the patches to the kernel source tree uh, in order to provide a user space networking library. And uh, we concentrated on the adding such a wrapper feature into the architecture, uh, newly introduced architecture, uh, hardware independent arch architecture. Uh, which is called Arc theme for the historical reason. But uh, by concentrating on the, this, uh, by containing all the modification into this hardware independent architecture, we can easily track the latest version of the, uh, uh, the upstream kernel code. Because we didn't, we almost we didn't touch any original code in order to use the, this library version of the uh, networking stack. So second component is the scheduler of the user space networking stuff. So all the stuff of the original networking code is using interrupts, a timer, or any kind of pre uh, context primitive. But in the user space, we, we can also use such a feature from the user space, but we didn't take such uh, approaches because we can have uh, another, uh, another context primitive like a face thread or a U context fiber. So we just re-implement such a scheduler by using right now project thread based uh, implementation because it's uh, easy to debug. So third one is the project good code. Uh, we call the POJIX GURU code, which is kind of the hijack function called as RAMP kernel defines. So this GURU code provides the, some kind of the indirection where if, uh, if the application calls some system calls, this library hijack this system call to redirect to the, our user space code. Besides, uh, instead of the host operating system kernel. So, and the application is not aware of by using such a injection function like a LD preload environmental variable. We can just use existing application as we is with, with such a techniques. And the last one is the 
networking I, network IO interfaces uh, to connect the news user space networking stack to the network interface card. So right now, we, as Ramp Kernel has, uh, we have a t uh, four options to the this networking virtual networking IO stuff, like a low socket based one. And NetMap IO, net, uh, high speed IO, and the Intel DBDK, as well as TAP based one. I think we can do any kind of uh, technology. We can use any kind of technology like a PF ring or, I don't know, pipe or uh, whatever. So, how to use it? So, we just provide a simple procedure to use the new features. So, you can just download the code and, and the compile this uh, modified version of the Linux code as uh, with the specific option. In this case, make library uh, brings you the library version of the Linux kernel stuff. Then ex execute this library, uh, execute application with the specific option of um, specified for the new use cases. I will, I will explain about this, uh, how to execute it more detail in data. And since our initial version of news has no fruitful interface for the configuration, we just provide such a simple configuration file to configure the IP addresses or the routing information or whatever. So, by using such a user space version of the networking stack, so this, these two are the, my uh, ideas that uh, user space stack is uh, useful in the real world cases. The first one is the uh, providing the operating system personality, uh, personal personality, where if you have some new protocol implementation, maybe this kind of framework will help will be helpful to deploy that stuff like uh, uh, right now multipass tcp which is kind of a new transport protocol it's having uh, having a hard time to upstream their code to the linux community but uh, you can use such a library version of the, uh, of, of the networking stack with such a un an upstream uh, code of the uh, networking stack. And another use case that I have in my mind is kind of the providing the process virtual, uh, virtualization instances by using the Unix command line. It's kind of VM chaining based on the process-based uh, networking stack while uh, bridging feature and the uh, connection tracking feature as well as routing and the web, -based, uh, web server. This kind of different VM instances can be combined with the pipeline. I don't know. I, I don't know how to implement it, but uh, I think this kind of uh, use case is really, really helpful to make it more funny. So there are, of course, there are still a couple of the limitations in our implementation, like we don't have any fork and exec support interfaces, and we don't have multiple processes, support, processes supported. And the configuration is also almost uh, static based on the file, uh, configuration file. But uh, I think these kind of like, current limitations can be solved in the future, I don't know. So let me show you so how news is working in the, with the live demonstration. So I'm going to present the two different uh, exp uh, execution, execution results. And one of them is, is just showing how news is working. And the second part is the, I conducted the, a simple performance measurement with the uh, typical application that you, that can be used is with news. So right now we have only tested the, the simple for almost four programs, four applications, and we 
the rest of part is uh, the application that we have failed, failed with the new uh, the current implementation due to some of the limitation of the current implementations. Okay, so the, the first example is just executing. Uh, just just executing ping command uh, with the specific destination addresses. So at this moment, we need the root privilege, privileges to execute with news because what we are using for the network I/O is raw socket based one network netmap as well as DPDK. All this uh, all the features requires root privilege because Linux doesn't have a Socking interface as NetBSD has, but uh, so at this moment we need to use uh, root privileges. And the configuration file is something like this. So each of them are expressing well, like uh, this line ex explains how the application uses the underlying uh, networking interfaces and uh, how the user space network library should be configured with the route information. And one, one most important thing is that you, when you use the news, uh, we need to have we need to have a wrapper shell script that, con that configures the, such a LD preload uh, magic as well as the, some of the library location in the system file. This is also one of the current limitations. So, it should work. So, as you can see, all the kernel feature of the Linux is Printed at the standard at console because um, all the D messages is, is also redirected to the library, uh, to the application uh, interfaces. And also, and also, Application like uh, a traffic generator application like IPath is just working with uh, like this. So during this uh, traffic generation, uh, server side has been using the generic version of the networking stack, while client side using the uh, library version of the networking stack. Okay, so let me get back to the original slide. And the second, uh, second presentation is the uh, performance, simple performance measurement by using the news. So we conducted the two different scenarios. One of them was uh, just pinging from the news-based host to the, some generic uh, networking stack host. And the, the other one is a layer 3 forwarding scenario where the traffic generator has been located at the outside, then forwarded to the the other way around. And the result is shown in this slide. And, ah, okay. So almost, uh, I should include the native version of the network, uh, the performance of the native version of networking stack, but so far we didn't have any time to conduct such experiment, but uh, the, the result of the left side shows the de delay of the uh, measured by the ping command, and the right side shows the throughput uh, achieved by the applications. And uh, we tried the four different network I/O interfaces uh, with TPDK, NetMap, LawSocket, PS1, the top interfaces. And I don't say any of them are satisfying well of the performance, while the interconnect of these two hosts are the 10 gigabit per second in, in Ethernet in network interface cards. So it, it's far saturated 
from the maximum performance, but uh, current status of the, our implementation. Implementation is achieving such a performance. And uh, the, the another scenario like uh, layer 3 forwarding is almost similar to that, while uh, almost 10% of the network link is saturated by uh, our new routing scenario. So uh, I don't think it's the best performance of the, our implementation, but I don't think it's, it's not, it's so bad performance at this moment. And I think it, it, there is still room to improve the, our implementation that can saturate such a high-speed network link in the future. And the most important thing that I, I try to finish with before this conference is uh, try to provide a full functional network stack with the live demonstration. So I think I'm fine at this moment. And uh, let me introduce one more application that I have, so I've, I have been also working on is the integration of the, with the network, st uh, network simulator with the Linux network stack of the user space versions. So this, uh, is, this project is called the direct code execution, which is established by the uh, Mathieu Lacage, uh, who is a crazy French guy, uh, has, uh, has been working on so, this project for so long time. And the motivation on this pro, uh, network simulator integration is to provide the reproducible environment of the networking stack code with the controllable execution. And this is the kind of demonstration visualization where the network simulator has. And each of the circle in this animation has running the Linux stack, Linux network stack. And uh, this kind of movement is provided by the network simulator side, where the, each of node have the, has uh, Wi-Fi interfaces with the movement. And uh, in this scenario, we are using the mobile IPv6 uh, implementation of Linux, which nobody is, is using right now. But uh, it can show that Linux stack is running on the, such, a, uh, such a, uh, another application. So what's the difference between news and uh, this direct code execution? Since we are sharing the most of the code between these two different projects, almost all the ideas or all, all the ideas are shared by the, these project project. But the, one of the key differences between them is the since we are using network meta and the, they have a deterministic scheduler which provide the virtual clock uh, kind of. Uh, every execution of the networking stack is deterministic. And for the, uh, so for the execution model between them, uh, news is using LD preload to hijack everything, but the DCE is using DLM open like uh, library code, which provides a single process based virtualization to establish the multiple instances of the networking stack. And the architecture itself is almost similar. By adding this blue layer, we can obtain such a DCE. And uh, we can also use the debugging of the network stack by using GDB. And also can use Bargreen as is. And the code coverage measurement is also easily uh, achievable. And finally, also we, are, we have been running the Jenkins con con continuous integration to detect that some of the networking code has been some regression during the, each of the uh, source code commit. So let's conclude my talk. So I presented uh, an, an implementation of the network uh, stack uh, in the user spaces, which provide the operating system personalization in, into the network stack uh, features. And the another project is uh, the direct code execution, which provides the flexible network experiment and testing with the deterministic group. And all the code is available in the GitHub, and uh, 
I'm always, always ready to contact with the Twitter or email or any other kind of stuff. Thank you so much for listening.